All right. So today we're going to talk about simplifying radicals when we have variables under the radical symbol. But before we start that, I want to you to recall the very first condition, which is that you have to pull out perfect squares from the radicand. And it's always easier to do that if you can find the biggest perfect square that goes into a number. So I want you to think about your perfect squares, write them down if you need to, and go ahead and try these two problems. My challenge to you, see if you can figure out the biggest perfect square that goes into both of them. So stop the video, give this a try. All right, so hopefully you got six square root of five and negative 30 square root of six. In number one, the biggest perfect square that goes into 180 is 36. Now you didn't have to start with 36. Nine goes into that and so does four. So you could have started with nine and then you would add to pull out a four or you could have started with four and then you would add to pull out a nine. But a 36 is the biggest one. Now this one, 900 is the biggest one that goes into it. Now 900 is not typically one that we write down that we memorize, but the way that I thought through this one is I was like, I know nine goes into 54, so it's gotta go into 5400. And I also know because this ends in two zeros that it's divisible by 100. So if it, nine goes into it and 100 goes into it, that would mean that nine times 100 would go into it, which is 900. Now you could have, again, started this problem with multiple perfect squares. Um, 9, 100, and 900 just being a couple of them. 25 goes into this, 4 goes into this, but if you pick a smaller one, you would have had to just keep going and going and going until you end up with negative 30 square root of 6. It doesn't matter how you got there as long as you get the right answer. So now the rule of pulling out perfect squares also applies for variables. So let's think about what makes something a perfect square for just a second. For example, the square root of 100 is 10. The reason that it's 10 is because 10 times 10 is 100. The square root of 36 is 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. So what makes something a perfect square is that you can break it into two of the same exact factors. So think about that when it comes to variables. Look at these variables. Which ones of these could we break up into some of the same factors? So taking a look at x squared, Think about that, we can break x squared into x times x, right? All right, x to the third is a little bit different, right? Because I could do x squared times x, or I could do x times x times x, but if I do x times x times x, that makes it three x's. So I want two of the same thing. So x squared is one, and then x to the fourth would be one because I could break that into x to the second times x to the second. The next one could be x to the sixth, which would be x to the third times x to the third. Remember, when you're multiplying variables of the same base or anything that has the same base, you can add the exponents, right? So we're adding exponents when we're thinking through that. So x to the eighth, x to the fourth times x to the fourth, and then x to the tenth would be x to the fifth times x to the fifth, right? So if you notice, the ones that we can break into two of the same factors are all the variables that have even exponents. And if we keep going, x to the 12th would be x to the fifth times x to the fifth. So it's fair for us to say that any even exponent is a perfect square. So variables with even exponents are perfect squares. So variables with even exponents are perfect squares. So that takes us into the next set of problems. So go ahead and just take a look at the first row. The first row, which ones have perfect squares? Well, the square root of x squared, well that one does because it has an even exponent. The square root of x squared is just x because x times x is x squared, right? x to the fourth, the square root of x to the fourth, is x to the second, because x to the second times x to the second is x to the fourth. You could also even think x to the second squared is x to the fourth, right? Same with x to the sixth, because x to the, well, that would be x to the third, because x to the third squared, or x to the third times x to the third, gives us x to the sixth. So let's take a look at the next row. In the next row, all the even ones, all the ones that have even exponents, would be perfect squares. And what we're doing here is we're just dividing the exponents by two. So this would give us x to the ninth. 
x to the 34th, that would give us x to the 17th. x to the 52nd, half of 52 is 26, so that would give us x to the 26th, right? So now, anything with an even exponent would be a perfect square. That does not mean we can't simplify variables with odd exponents. The same rule applies. You have to pull out the greatest perfect square, or all the perfect squares, that go into the radicand, right? So let's take a look at the second one, the square root of x to the third. Well, if you think about it, the closest perfect square to x to the third is x to the second. We could break the square root of x to the third into the square root of x squared times x. And x to the second is our perfect square. We can find the square root of x to the second. The square root of x to the second is x, right? What's left on the inside is just an x. So the answer to this one would be x, square root of x. We can do the same thing with square root of x to the fifth. We could break this into x to the fourth times x. And x to the fourth is our perfect square. The square root of x to the fourth is x to the second. So we pull out the x to the second, and what's left on the inside is the square root of x. Reminder, I can break up x to the fourth times x, and that's x to the fifth because what we're doing is we are multiplying. When we're multiplying, we're adding our exponents. So let's take a look at the square root of x to the 25th. Well, let's just take one away from that, and you have an even number, right? You want your biggest even number that goes into 20, that would go into x to the 25th. That would be x to the 24th, right? So we're going to do x to the 24th times x. The square root of x to the 24th would be x to the 12th. So we would get x to the 12th square root of x, just like that. x to the 49th, we would break that into x to the 48th times x. And then we find the square root of x to the 48th, which would be half of 48. So it's going to be x to the 24th square root of x. So now take a look at all of the ones that have odd exponents. If you look, what is the radicand in all of them? The radicand is always x, right? Because if you think about it, what makes these exponents odd is that they have one extra because the even number before it comes right before it. So basically you take one away from that exponent, you leave the one inside, and you take half of what's left over. Leave one inside, take half of what's left over. Put one inside, take half of what's left over. Take one inside, take half of what's left over. So go ahead and stop the video, and I want you to try the next row. And there are all of the answers. Double check to make sure that you got them right. So reminder, what we're trying to do when we're finding the square root of a variable with an exponent is all we have to do is we have to divide the exponent by two. If it's not divisible by two, you take one away from it, leave that on the inside, make that your radicand, and take half of the even number that's before it. So now we're going to be simplifying radicals that have numbers and multiple variables on the inside. So the way that I like to do these problems is I first just like pull out the perfect squares of everything inside the radical. And then I like to split up what's left over if you can, right? So if you look at the first one, the first one's pretty easy because x to the fourth and y to the eighth are both perfect squares. So both of these numbers can come out. The square root of x to the fourth is x to the second. The square root of y to the eighth is y to the fourth and we're done with that one. There's nothing left inside the radical because both those terms were perfect squares. In number two, x to the 18th, because it has an even exponent, is a perfect square. So you pull out the square root of x to the 18th is x to the 9th, but you have a y left on the inside, so you have the square root of y. You don't know what y is, so you can't actually break that up. So the y stays on the inside. Now number three, I would start personally by pulling out, I notice that x to the 16th is my perfect square, so I'm going to pull out the square root of x to the 16th. Notice there's a negative sign in front of there, that just means the whole answer is negative. So I'm going to do x, negative x to the 8th, because half of 16 is 8. Now on the inside, I do have a y to the 5th, so let's go ahead and break that up. Inside, I'm going to break that into y to the 4th times y times z. So now, your y to the fourth is a perfect square. What's the square root of y to the fourth? Well, that's y to the second, so I pull that out. So now I have negative x to the eighth, y to the second. Square root of what's left on the inside is a y and a z. All right? So let's take a look at number four. 
So for number four, I immediately just pull out anything that's a perfect square. So that would be y to the 42nd. Well, half of 42 is 21. So I'm going to get y to the 21st square root of, now these other ones, they have exponents that are odd. So I need to break them up and then pull out their perfect square. So you break them up on the inside of the radical. So that would be x to the 30th times x, then m to the 6th times m, right? You're always leaving one of the odd variables inside, and you pull out half of the even number before that. So now I'm going to pull out half of x to the 30th, which is going to give me x to the 15th. I'm going to pull out half of m to the 6th, which is going to give me m to the 3rd. We already pulled out y to the 21st, and then what's left on the inside is x, m. So reminder, anytime you have an odd exponent, you're always going to have one left over. If you ever have an exponent greater than 1 inside the radical, you're not finished with it. Let's take a look at the next row. Now, for this next row, we now have numbers and variables. So remember with our numbers, we're trying to pull out the biggest perfect square that comes out. And then for the variables, perfect squares with exponents would be even exponents. So right away, looking at number 5, x to the 4th and y to the 2nd, both of those are perfect squares. So I'm just going to pull the square roots of those out. So that's going to give me x squared, y. Now, the 60. 60 is not a perfect square, but there's definitely a perfect square that goes into 60. It's 4. So I would break 60 into 4 times 15. And the square root of 4 is 2. So now the 2, when I pull that out, that's your coefficient. So that goes in front of all your variables. And so it's 2x squared y, square root of 15. Let's take a look at number 6, and then I'm going to have you try the next two on your own. So for number 6, again, 48 is not a perfect square. m to the 5th is not a perfect square. n is all by its little self. It's not a perfect square. But p to the 4th is a perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out p to the 4th, the square root of p to the 4th. Remember, you're finding the square root of something, and that's what comes out on the outside. So the square root of p to the 4th is p to the 2nd. There's a negative sign out there, so it's going to be negative p to the 2nd. Now, inside my radical, I want to break up 45. So I'm thinking 4 goes into 48 12 times. But then I have 4 that goes into 12. So 4 is going to go into 48 twice. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, what's 4 times 4? Well, that would be 16. So 48 divided by 16 gives me 3. So you're going to break 48 into 16 times 3. If you started with 4, that's okay. You would just have to go again. And then m to the 5th, because that's odd, you're going to break that into m to the 4th times n, m, sorry. And then the last term that's in there is n. Now, we already dealt with the p to the 4th, so that already came out. So now, to keep track of my work, what I like to do is I then circle my perfect squares so that I know those are the things I'm finding the square root of. Those are the things that have to come out of the radical. So I'm going to pull out the square root of 16. That's 4. But you have a negative sign in front of there. This is going to make this negative 4p squared, just like that. Bring your numbers out to the front. And then m to the, sec m to the fourth, the square root of m to the fourth is m to the second. And then what's left over are your non-perfect squares. So your non-perfect squares stay on the inside of the radical. And there's your final answer. So go ahead now, stop the video, and try the next two. All right. So in number seven, I ended up with k to the seventh, p to the 50th, j to the 106th, all on the outside. And what's left on the inside is a 15k. It does not matter what order the variables go with, but it does matter that your exponent goes with the right variable. In the second one, none of them... Number eight, none of them had, there were no perfect squares in here at all. So I just immediately started breaking them up into perfect squares. And so I pulled out the square root of 4. I pulled out the square root of k to the 14th. I pulled out the square root of p to the 44th. I pulled out the square root of j to the 80th. And then what was left on the inside is 5k, p, and j. So this ends the lesson on simplifying radicals with variables. If you need to, there is another lesson that would be on the back of this paper. There's a separate video for that. So check out the separate video for the back of the paper. Good luck.